When I tell people that I brew my own beer, a lot of people assume that it's a really hard, time-consuming process. And though that can be the case a lot of the times, it doesn't really have to be that difficult. And that got me thinking, what's the easiest beer that anybody could brew? What's up everybody, Just Brewing here. Welcome back to the home brewery for another grain to glass video. Not too long ago, I brewed a smash pale ale using as few ingredients and as few steps as I could. I wanted to brew a beer that anyone could brew, whether you're an expert or whether this is the very first beer you've brewed and the first uh, video you've clicked on. Um, I wanted to brew something that anyone, absolutely anybody could do. Um, really all you need is a small handful of equipment. Um, so I wanted to take a step back and use what essentially came down to you know, being my starter kit that, I, that got me into brewing beer. Now, I did use um, a gas system, so I could have used my stove, but I didn't want to uh, take up more space in the house. Um, I've already got just about the entire garage filled up, um, and I didn't want to bring any of that inside. So I did stay out in the garage with my propane burner and my five gallon stainless steel kettle that came in my starter kit. Um, and that was kind of the system that I used. Some brew days are just easier than others, but one thing that you can do across every brew day to make it easier is take good notes. This is the Homebrew Journal. It was sent to me by Mark from Original Gravity Books. And let me tell you, this is, I've been using it for about six brews now, and it's actually a really, really good way to keep track of everything you need to do during your brew day, after your brew day, or even, you know, tasting notes if you wanna write them down. I've spilled um, some beer on it already, um, and my fear is that this might not last long uh, in the brew house. If there's a way to make these waterproof, I think these would be the perfect gift for home brewers or, you know, anyone brewing, just about anything. We're gonna be brewing a one gallon smash pale ale using Pilsner malt and Magnum hops. I chose Pilsner malt because it was easier for me to just use a few pounds of what I have on hand. I do not have two row, which is essentially the most basic uh, base malt out there. Granted, if you don't have your own grains at home and you're not able to mill them yourself, that's completely okay. Your home brew store, um, where you're, wherever you decide to get your kettle and things like that and your fermenter, wherever you get that kind of stuff from, you could easily get just a few pounds of milled grains and it would only cost a few bucks per pound and then you'd probably be looking at less than one ounce of hops. Now, if you don't wanna do a pale ale and you wanna do something like a, uh, an IPA, you just may need to up your hop amount and you may decide uh, to change the, the length of the boil. Um, we'll get into that a little bit later, but when it comes down to it, this recipe could be replicated with just about any type of hop, depending on the style you're going for. For this brew day, we're gonna be doing a 30 minute mash on 149 degrees Fahrenheit. At this temperature, the starches in the grains are gonna get converted into sugar. That sugar is gonna get eaten by the alcohol later on. So this is a very important part of the process, but really all you need to do is heat up your water to about 155, 160-ish degrees. For me, this is about two gallons. And from there, I'm gonna put my bag in and I'm gonna soak my grains for what is this time around 30 minutes. You wanna make sure your grains are stirred and mixed in and that there are no clumps and you'll just put a lid on and leave this alone until the timer goes off. After those 30 minutes are up, we're going to yank our grains. Really, we're just gonna take the bag out, and I like to squeeze the bag, so I'm going to do that to make sure I get as much um, unfermented beer out of the grain bag and into the kettle, because I want as much volume as I can get. After all that, we're going to crank our heat up and get this to a boil. We're gonna let it boil for about 30 minutes, and at the top of our 30 minutes, we're gonna add in our one and only hop addition. That's about a quarter ounce of Magnum hops. Magnum hops give a little bit of a citrusy and slightly peppery uh, notes depending on when you add it. I mentioned it earlier, um, we are gonna be doing a pale ale. Um, if you wanted to do something like an actual Pilsner, uh, just do a 60 minute or a 90 minute boil and add your hops in at the 60 minute mark so that they boil for a little bit longer, drawing out uh, more of the bitterness and maybe less of the citrusy and bright flavors that the hops may provide. Keep in mind, you may need to change your water volumes because you're gonna boil off more, but for me and the profile that I'm going for, I'm just doing 30 minutes and that's it. After the 30 minute boil, it'll be time to chill this down so we can pitch our yeast. I'm gonna keep it simple and use an ice bath. I'm gonna go into the sink, get some water, put the kettle in, and I'm going to surround the kettle in ice and I'm gonna stir with a sanitized spoon until it gets below about 95 degrees. From there, I'm gonna get it into my sanitized fermenter and I'm gonna pitch dry Lutra Kvike. This yeast is a powerhouse and you don't really have to worry about um, temperature control with a yeast like this. It'll work in the, the, from 60 degrees all the way up to like 100 plus degrees. I'm gonna ferment this right in my garage, so this is absolutely perfect for what I'm doing. Once the yeast is in, I'm gonna aerate and I'm going to seal it with an airlock and just put this right on top of my fermentation chamber and let this bad boy ferment away in my garage at about 95 degrees. With this yeast at this temperature, we can go from grain to glass in probably about a week. 
That's about two to three days in fermentation and about two to three days in the keg to cold crash and carbonate. Um, if you don't have a keg and CO2 tanks and stuff like that to force carbonate your beer, um, I do have a video on how to bottle your home brew, so you can click that in whatever corner it's gonna uh, show up on. Um, but when it comes down to it, uh, again, this is what's easier for me. So this is the route that I took. So full disclosure, this has been in the keg for about a week and a half, maybe closer to two weeks now. So it's had quite a bit of time to clarify. So my final product might not look exactly like yours, but here it is in a glass the Smash Pale Ale, the easiest beer I've ever brewed. On the color, this looks exactly like a Pilsner would. I mean, with 100% Pilsner malt, I would expect nothing less, but now that it's clarified a bit, it's nice and clear, and it definitely looks a lot like a lager. On the nose, I do get, it's really grainy. I mean, it's a very simple recipe, so I wouldn't expect anything crazy to come out of the malt bill, but it's quite grainy on the nose with hints of citrus and maybe like a touch of lemon or something like that. On the flavor, that citrus does come through. I'm getting a touch of pepper, but I do think I'm getting something like a lemon a lemon note, but that might be from the grain build because the, the, the hops themselves, I don't think um, have uh, lemon in the profile. So I'm thinking that this might be some of the graininess I'm getting from the Pilsner malt. I think this beer is perfect for a beginner or someone that just wants to get more beers under their belt and just you know brew a little bit more especially those that don't want to commit to a full five gallon batch. I mean, I've got four taps here and I do bottle from time to time. So sometimes I have a lot of beer on hand and that can become a problem when it's just myself and my wife here drinking them. Um, I do bring beer just about everywhere we go. I mean, we'll be going to hang out at the pool later on, so I'll be bringing beer for that. Not everyone can do that, but since I'm brewing what is usually three and five gallon batches, I have a lot of beer on hand. So a one gallon batch is really refreshing now. I mentioned it earlier, there were a number of steps that I had to cut in order to make this the easiest beer ever. The one that, a beer that you could put in the least amount of effort. And one of those things was checking the gravity. So I didn't really check the gravity throughout the beer. I did drop in a wrapped pill floating hydrometer. This showed me fermentation as it started and finished. I did not input the final gravity, um, so I don't actually know where it finished, but I can tell you the beer ranges between about five and six percent. My one takeaway from this entire uh, experience is one gallon batches might be the way to go for certain beers. I mean, I love experimenting and sometimes a five gallon experimental batch takes me a very long time to get through. So I might start scaling things down and commit to a few one gallon batches. Let me know what you think in the comments if this is something that you would try, if you haven't brewed before and you wanted to find something that could be the easiest beer ever. Let me know in the comments your thoughts on this. But other than that, that's gonna do it for me. Thanks for viewing, just brewing.